And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Board of County Commissioners meeting for Tuesday, November 12, 2019. I am John Hutchings, the chair of the board, and to my right is Commissioner Ty Menser. To his right is our clerk of the board, La Bonita Bomar. And to her, her right is uh, uh, Romero Chavez, our county manager. And seated next to him is Robin Campbell, our assistant county manager and finance director. So after introduction is done, I uh, ask uh, uh, Ty Menser to please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And is there a motion to approve today's agenda? Move to approve agenda dated November 12, 2019. Any amendment or change? No. Nope. All in favor say aye. 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 We have an agenda. Number two is a presentation. I'm sorry, number two, yeah. Presentation. Uh, this presentation is Superior Court for Thurston County Adoption Day. And we have, uh, is Pam, Pam not going to be here then? She's not going to be here. She asked the judge to step in. Oh, lovely. We have Judge Wilson. Please, uh, Judge, take the, uh, the podium and brief us, ma'am. Excellent. I'm Judge Mary Sue Wilson. I'm one of eight Superior Court judges. I presently serve as the Chief Judge at Family and Juvenile Court, where two judges and three commissioners serve full time. A lot of our work, as you imagine, at Family and Juvenile Court relates to kids and families. And we are really happy today to be here to tell you about National Adoption Day and Thurston County's celebration of National Adoption Day. We will celebrate National Adoption Day next Thursday, November 21st at 4 p.m. We are setting a record. We've never had so many adoptions on that day. This, this year we will adopt, we will preside over 10 family adoptions. That's beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. In fact, because the most we've ever held on that day is six, we're looking at having the main courtroom and then a backup courtroom where we can have extra guests sit and observe. We have one adoptive father who had, he and his wife have adopted a number of children, and he and his family were featured in the Nisqually Valley News recently for their commitment to families. We have him as our speaker. So we are really hoping that members of the public and county managers and county officials, all of you commissioners, will be able to join us 4 o'clock November 21st at Thurston County Family and Juvenile Court. What happens there is the judges preside over the formal adoptions in chambers before 4 o'clock, so each family has their case reviewed and we approve those adoptions. And then they all have agreed to participate in the public ceremony where we recognize what it means to commit to children and create forever families. And we are, again, so thrilled that it's going to be bigger than ever before and that we have so many people who want to give kids the wonderful forever family that every child in Thurston County and around the country deserves. Just a few statistics. In Thurston County, we have about 300 children who are dependent. That means they're in the foster care system. Our goal is to reunite the children with their parents. Sometimes that doesn't happen and we have state and federal laws that um, require that the children have permanency within a reasonable time frame. And so when we aren't able to reunite, then we have an adoption track. And sadly, we have more children waiting for an adoptive family than we have adoptive families, but our numbers are pretty good. We have adoptions scheduled this year for 75% uh, or 80% of the children who are waiting for those families. But we still need more, and we encourage everybody to look into their heart, talk to others who have experienced creating families through adoption, and open their, their um, minds up to that possibility. So I'd love to answer any questions, and I know you have a proclamation that we're super excited to receive today. Do you have any questions of the judge? No, I don't. Have you any questions of the judge? I've got a quick statement. Okay. Make this. I, I think that this is uh, a very good example. Others in this room have heard me say this before, but kids might only be 30% of our population, but they're 100% of our future. And everything that we can do 
to help kids become that viable future is a step in the right direction. And I just want to commend you, Judge, for taking all of the extra effort that it takes in family court to deal with this complicated issue. But it's, a, it's definitely a step in the right direction and helps these kids succeed. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Edwards. I, you're absolutely right. When I went over to family court almost uh, two years ago, initially very hard on the heartstrings because you want all kids to um, have everything that they need. Um, and sometimes they don't. But what's fantastic <laughs> is there are so many people who are there to support our kids and their success, and we have wonderful families that are ready. And so uh, they, they are our future, and they deserve every bit of support we can give them. So thank you, Commissioner Edwards. Judge, I have a question. I don't know, number one, a statement, and that is uh, uh, sad to say that uh, our staff, the commissioners and county managers, we're going to be in Spokane all next week for a conference. So we're going to miss this. And I was asking Kelly earlier last week or so to put it on the calendar for the Maybe, adoption day, but I won't be here. Shoot. We'll make sure next year we organize it around your schedule. What I was doing is I have a statewide list and I was going to see if Spokane's is one year over in Spokane. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> uh, but my question is, there's stigma or stereotype around folks with mental illness their stereotype of uh, homeless kids or homelessness, their stereotype of uh, uh, runaways. What would be the stereotype that you could dispel and give us the, the fact from the myth regarding uh, either people that adopt or the, the, uh, the children that are being adopted? I think there might be a stereotype that it's a different kind of family or not a real family. And I think the uh, dispelling that myth is when you meet families and you preside over adoptions, um, you see that they've been a family from the beginning. Adoptive parents open their homes, open their hearts from the day that a child's placed with them. And they're a special kind of person because they know this child needs love and security. Sometimes they don't know if it's going to be a long-term relationship, but they recognize that what makes a family is the loving and caring and nurturing environment that that uh, family provides and so they're like any other family and we all know that families come in lots of colors <laughs> shapes and sizes and so the adoptive family when you hear the parents talk about their kids when they're adopting you can tell that they've been their kids since the very beginning and they love them just like <clears throat> if it was a natural birth thank you for that ma'am I appreciate that I did find Spokane November 22nd at 10 a.m. so Friday if uh, you're still Friday's in Spokane when we're flying out isn't it just about. Uh, so, so I'm actually going to be at the Salmon Recovery Council in Edmonds, not in Spokane. Oh, you're not in Spokane. So I will not be able to attend. But I did have the opportunity as an attorney uh, in Judge Wickham's chambers, I want to say seven or eight years ago, to attend. Uh, I didn't do adoption work. I was just kind of pinch hitting. So it was, a, it was a new experience for me and what was one that I didn't forget. So I would encourage anybody to, who's interested in this to, to come out and see it. <coughs> In this time of year, of course, a lot of the movies uh, around the holidays feature adopted families and such. It's very, like you said, heartstrings. They're very touching. Yeah. All right, Commissioner. National Adoption Day. <clears throat> Whereas all children deserve to be raised in a safe, stable, and loving home. And whereas more than 2,167 children in Washington State are legally free and awaiting for a family to call theirs forever. And whereas Thurston County, Washington recognizes the importance of finding a permanent and caring family for every child in need and supporting the families who care for them. And whereas giving a child a strong foundation, a home, a family to love and a safe place to grow is one of life's greatest and most generous gifts. And whereas families who choose the life-changing path of adoption make a meaningful and lasting difference in the lives of some of the most vulnerable children and youth in our state, and whereas to help these children find permanent nurturing families, Thurston County Family and Juvenile Court will open its doors on National Adoption Day, Thursday, November 21st, 2019, to finalize the adoptions of local children and join other organizations to celebrate all adoptions. 
And whereas this effort, along with similar celebrations in all 50 states, the District of Columbia, Guam, and Puerto Rico will offer children the chance to live with stable and loving families and encourage other dedicated individuals to make a powerful difference in the life of a child through adoption. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Board of Thurston County Commissioners hereby proclaims November 21st, 2019 as National Adoption Day in Thurston County and in so doing urges all citizens to join in a national effort to raise awareness about the importance of adoption. Signed this 12th day of November 2019, your Board of County Commissioners. Thank you so much, Commissioners. We really appreciate your support and we hope to see anybody who can make it next Thursday to National Adoption Day here in Thurston oh, County. You. The judge, come on up, please. The obligatory photo up. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, one, two, three. Let's see one more. One, two, three. Perfect. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Yes. Put it up there. Thank you, Commissioner Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> that takes us to item number one on the agenda, which is opportunity for the public to address the board. <clears throat> and this is the time where the public, uh, you address the board and we stop talking and we listen. Uh, so don't expect any answers. If you ask questions, don't expect, expect us to engage. We won't engage. Uh, we'll take notes. Staff will take notes and do any follow-up that uh, might be appropriate. If you haven't done so already, please uh, silence your cell phones out of respect for the speakers. Uh, and speakers are limited to a total of three minutes, and our clerk of the board, La Bominita Bomar, has the, the controller for the timer up here. When it times down to zero, you'll hear a ping, and that means your time is done. Uh, you're not allowed to donate uh, your time to another speaker. The board reserves the right to restrict a person's opportunity to address the meeting for good cause. No comments that are lewd or offensive uh, to a reasonable person. Please be respectful. No outbursts of any kind. No comments that are commercial in nature, such as a promotion for a for-profit business. Uh, all materials as provided to the county may be considered public record, subject to public release upon request pursuant to the Public Records Act, Chapter 42.56 of the RCW. Uh, remarks about any pending land use permits or similar matters that could eventually come before the board on appeal would not be appropriate as well. So there's a sign-up sheet in the back. Folks have signed up. I will call you up in the order in which you've signed up. I ask that you introduce yourself and state where you live uh, in the county for the record. And I will call up the person um, to, the, to the stand or to the podium, but then I'll give the, uh, the person that's on deck so you know who's, who's, who's ready to come up. First is John Pettit, followed by Bill Muma. Good afternoon, Commissioners. My name is John Pettit. I live out off Rich Road in East Olympia. Uh, just to have several little, little topics, but on the topic of adoption, 11 years ago approximately, I adopted my son over there in the family courts, and, and uh, I've been enjoying a wonderful relationship, and it's a, it's a unique and special process. So I would encourage all that remember that you can choose, uh, and love doesn't come from just blood in you. It comes also through the source of your decisions that you make. Uh, my, my obvious issue that I always bring forth is, of course, to talk a little bit about the proposed courthouse uh, measure which you're planning on putting on. Once again, I'm going to reaffirm that uh, I'm adamantly opposed to it. Uh, I think that uh, the best way I can consider this process that you're going to go through would be like uh, piling up $177,500 in the middle of the floor and lighting a fire to it. Because of the expense and the chosen expense that's being involved, I'd ask the commissioners that decide to put it on the ballot and spend the money that uh, in this scenario that the election 
uh, has less than a 30% support factor, I'd like you to go ahead and reimburse the county for that expense. It's a completely unnecessary expense considering if you actually had some concept of the opinion of the county, it would be appropriate for you to recognize it and act accordingly, not just decide to put it on the ballot because it needs to be voted on. One of the other things I'd let you know is if you actually took a look at the House bill that gave you the option of 25 years, it's not for anything except, and the uh, language related to that was, uh, this burden of providing Thurston County the ability to increase a bond levy for a longer period of time. Okay, It's not about just raising money. So if you were thinking of getting a 25-year bond and a 23 years, I mean 23-year bond and a 25-year, I think that could be a legal contention for you. Now, uh, I guess the only other topic I only 40 seconds is I, I want to talk about real briefly is is the financial disaster Thurston County currently is in. We don't have money to maintain this facility. That's part of the problem. But we also currently we have this shell game that we play. And although everyone wants to justify things, uh, I can see where when you have to do a shell game of four and a half million dollars out of the road funds, it won't be long before you tell us we need to collect more taxes for roads. When you take money out of a detention sales tax facility fund, two and a half million dollars a year to pay salaries, Pretty soon you're going to say, I wish we would have had that money left over so we could build more jail facilities. Misusing the funds, playing the shell game, you couldn't recover right now from all the money you're shell gaming around. <clears throat> you need to get your finances in order. Thank you. Uh, Bill Mumau, followed by uh, Mr. Jan Tibetan. Good afternoon, commissioners, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bill Muma. I live in Tumwater. <clears throat> uh, I'm here today representing a nonprofit in Thurston County called Empowerment Washington. Empowerment Washington was formed a number of years ago <clears throat> when the legislature was unable to fund uh, free testing of HIV and AIDS in Thurston County. So annually we've raised funds to do that and we've been able to provide the funds for anyone in Thurston County to be tested for free for HIV and AIDS. In addition to that, we have some uh, online safer sex seminars which people can look at online and don't have to go to uh, Department of Health or something of that nature for additional ed education. And lastly, we distribute condoms in uh, bars and places where people are at risk who can uh, use them. So <clears throat> as a result of all of this, one of the fundraising things we do is World AIDS Day. And December 1 is World AIDS Day across the United States. So we will hold a fundraiser at 4 o'clock in the afternoon at the Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd. And we will have an event that includes music, uh, drag shows, a silent auction, and so forth. So uh, in the past, the commissioners have very generously uh, provided a proclamation honoring World AIDS Day. So I'm here to request that if you would do that again this year uh, for World AIDS Day. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Jan Tibetan, followed by Sharon Kutz. Good afternoon, Commissioners. My name is Jan Tevetten. I have lived on Rochester Prairie for over 50 years. <clears throat> I want to address the Gopher issue again. And to me, there are two issues built into that. One is the listing. Should Gophers be listed or not? And the second is the review process of HCPs that we prepare and submit to U.S. Fish and Wildlife. U.S. Fish and Wildlife at the present time is accepting, but not reviewing. I, had, uh, I turned my HCP in on the 26th of August, and I haven't heard boo from them. So I decided I was going to write a letter to the Secretary of Interior, uh, Mr. David Bernhardt. 
and I sent copies to uh, the commission, to Brad Thompson, to congressional delegation, and even though it is not uh, the state's jurisdiction, I sent it to local legislators. And I said, please read, and if you can, help. This is not an isolated case in South Thurston County. And then they tell the story that I have gone through. And if you will go to page five of the handout I have given you, and the third paragraph on the bottom, it says, I write, I am informed by local U.S. Fish and Wildlife staff that they are following U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service priorities. I am therefore writing to you, the Secretary of the Interior, since local staff do not determine department priorities, in hope that you will see the unfairness and the hardship that this <coughs> practice of accepting individual HCPs but not processing them is causing local the residents' frustration and anger against their public officials. Please re-examine U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service priorities. One, please note that in, in our case, it is not the intent of the law that we question, but the fact that you have put in place a law that you are not able to properly staff, causing years of delays to build a simple residence and adi an additional cost. If a single family residence is not important enough to receive priority sufficient to warrant a review and process, exclude them until you have sufficient staffing. To punish law-abiding citizens is wrong. Two, note that in this case, it is not that we disagree with the intent of the law. We do take exception to your implementation of the law by denying applicants of a single family residence to, in, to in, be included in the approval process. The next, I question the size of the, the uh, set aside area. We are told that uh, half an acre won't do the job. It should be 50 plus. And then it is the uh, additional cost of housing that you are costing by this, this uh, process that takes such a long time. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Sharon Coons, followed by Glenn Morgan. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good afternoon, commissioners. Sharon Coons, Northwest Olympia, here representing, surprise, the Friends of Rocky Prairie. Um, we're working, as you know, to protect Millisylvania State Park and nearby Fish and Wildlife Preserve and Rocky Prairie from a huge industrial project by a Missouri company named North Point. I was asked today by the president of the League of Women Voters to come here since they didn't have a representative who could be here today. They wanted you to know as soon as possible that the League has formally joined the coalition to protect Rocky Prairie from North Point's industrialization. As you can tell by our rapidly growing and diverse coalition, our county doesn't want North Point's project here. And our county's rules don't allow for North Point's project. And you already have an extensive study by the county staff written around 2009 or 10 proving that. So we hope that instead of wasting county resources and staff time reinventing the wheel and leaving citizens in a, a situation of a long period of anxiety, we hope that you'll read that earlier study, listen to your constituents, and realize it just doesn't make sense to dock at this issue when the time does come. Thanks so much for your attention. Thank you. Go ahead. Commissioners, uh, once again, it's good to be here. My name is Glenn Morgan. I live between Tonino and Rochester. And uh, I just want to come before you again here, as I have a few other times, just saying and, uh, how strongly opposed I am to the courthouse tax that is on the agenda for today. And uh, I do recognize that everyone on this commission has inherited this plan. This plan predates anyone sitting here uh, and that you are dealing with something that you inherited. Um, however, as Judge Murphy said at the last hearing, um, it's not her plan, it's yours. You own it entirely. All of the horrible ideas, the incompetence, the poor design, the poor choice of location, 
regardless of who created it, they're going to blame you for it. And, uh, and so now you own it if you put it on the ballot. And it's not that there aren't problems with the Thurston County Courthouse, um, but I do believe most of these problems have been self-inflicted wounds uh, from the design through the intentional willingness to not maintain the facility. And, um, and now we've, we're stuck with really a terrible choice, bad plan, a lot of money's been wasted on getting us to where we are today. And I realize there feels like a certain momentum to put it on the ballot, but I would urge you not to do so. Uh, and you know, I wanna make sure that um, if this does go on the ballot, I hope the supporters put an absolute fortune behind the campaign. I hope they put an unlimited amount of budget behind it because it will fail. And I remember when I was on the school board, we would go to the WASDA conferences put on by the leading consultants in the state that would run all these campaigns uh, to push for bonds or levies. And every consultant said, one part of their presentation was that if they had $1,500 and a little bit of time, they could defeat any bond proposed anywhere in Washington state. Which is one reason why Bill Pilkey was able to defeat the last one in 2004 with pretty much no budget, no planning, and a marginally competent campaign, and it was still defeated with over 60%. Um, I like you know, playing in the political space when I, when I have to. It's fun, uh, I kinda like that. I hope that they have the largest budget ever created in Thurston County for it, it will lose. But there's no reason to waste the money on that. We can go back and do it right. We can look at actually solving the problems. We don't have to go down a predictable failure, path of failure, which is all this is gonna be. And so I'd encourage uh, this commission to reconsider that and to look more carefully. I mean, there's a reason why we had to do this twice. Staff has not been doing a good job the people pushing this agenda have not been doing a good job in laying this out for you. You heard at the last hearing how it is possible, it's not impossible actually to modify these buildings, to actually remodel them. Uh, it is possible to fix the parking problem here. Other proposals exist that would be far less costly. There's no reason for the county to lose more credibility by pushing something like this again. Um, I really respect what Mr. Tibetan has been going through regarding the pocket gopher. And I think that uh, just like the pocket gopher choices that were made back then, uh, the county has the ability early on to nip something in the bud and not make the same mistakes all over again. Thank you. Thank you. That exhausts the list of folks that have signed up. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to address the board that hasn't spoken yet? Anyone? Anyone want to come talk to us? Okay, we're done. Thank you. Takes us to item number two on the agenda, county manager's update. Follow up. I don't up. have any follow up uh, for you today, Commissioner. All right, sir. That takes us to agenda item number three, consent items A through F. And I would move uh, to approve consent items A through F. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve consent items A through F. Any uh, discussion on any of the issues? No, sir. Nope. No. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 That motion carries. Agenda item number four, department, uh, department items now. We're starting with the emergency services, advanced life support cardiac monitors. And we have Kurt Harden, emergency services director, coming up. Good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, Kurt Harden, director of emergency services, here to request um, that the board approve purchasing 14 cardiac monitors in the amount of $467,751.60, including $39,783 in tax. Uh, these cardiac monitors are to replace an aging system of cardiac monitors that we have currently in Medic One that will no longer be supported by the vendor after uh, this year. The, the original cardi cardiac monitors were purchased and implemented in the fleet in 2003. Their original lifespan was, eight, was anticipated to be eight years and we've stretched them out to 2019. Um, the, the EMS Council has recommended purchasing these uh, cardiac monitors to replace the aging ones. We worked with the auditor and uh, prosecuting attorney's office to ensure that we followed the Thurston County procurement process. And we've also achieved a savings of $36,726.05 through purchasing them off the state contract and negotiating with the vendor. Uh, the purchase of these monitors, if approved, are already included in the 2019 budget. And subject to your questions, request approval of the purchase. Any questions? No. We've reviewed this in work uh, sessions. Uh, no, I have uh, no questions, but I'd just like to let the public know that this has had uh, considerable scrutiny 
up until this point. I think that's why we don't have any questions. Uh, okay. Is there a motion? I would move to approve a resolution authorizing the emergency services director to purchase 14 cardiac monitors in the amount of $467,751.60, including any amendments that do not exceed 10%. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve this resolution authorizing the purchase of cardiac monitors. Any further discussion? No, sir. Nope. All in no. favor say aye. 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 That motion carries. 4B. Go ahead, Kurt. Okay. Um, I request the Board of County Commissioners approve the professional maintenance contract for the aforementioned cardiac monitors in the amount of $93,628.24, which includes $7,968.24 in tax. The EMS Council's recommended purchasing uh, this contract to maintain the cardiac monitors. We've had successful uh, process with having previous uh, uh, preventive maintenance and professional maintenance uh, contracts in the past to keep the life of the cardiac monitors as, as long as possible. Uh, we worked with the auditor at Prosecuting Attorney's Office to ensure the procurement process was followed. This will give us a four-year uh, professional maintenance contract for the monitors, and it's included in the 2019 budget. This supports the, the Strategic Plan Initiative 5, which strengthens emergency medical services provided countywide by Medic One and area hospitals. And subject to your questions, request approval of the professional maintenance contract. All right, any questions or comments? Just uh, since this is related to the previous item, uh, one thing that I just wanted folks maybe to know is that you'd put, uh, you'd put two different vendors through a pilot project in terms of selecting Correct. the equipment and got input from the paramedics and um, that you know we're able to participate in the pilot so I that was a that was a great step and from my perspective and I just wanted folks to know that and these two pieces go together in terms of getting this equipment on board yes sir um, they yeah we, we took it out to the providers in the field they actually field tested by using it on actual patients um, in the field and so we took their input and this is the reason we went with this particular uh, vendor the cost was negligible as far as cost difference mm -hmm. between the two vendors Perfect. Thank you. Any questions or comments? No, sir. <clears throat> All right. Go ahead. I would move to authorize the professional maintenance and parts replacement contract for cardiac monitors with Stryker for a total cost of $93,643.24 for a four-year period and further authorize the Director of Emergency Service to sign the contract and any amendments not to exceed 10%. Commissioner, you'd said uh, 643, 48. I think it's 648. Yeah. $93,648.24. $93, Thank you for the correction, sir. Yep. Second that. So it's been moved and seconded to uh, approve the professional maintenance contract for the cardiac monitors. Any further discussion? No, sir. No. Nope. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. And for C. And since all good things come in threes, yep. um, I'm here for uh, for the emergency <laughs> management side to request the board approve the contract for the Homeland Security grant. Um, this is an annual federal grant that uh, Thurston County receives in the amount of $301,897. And the performance period for this grant is September 1st, 2019 to August 31st, 2021. Um, this supports uh, Homeland Security Region 3, which is comp comprised of five counties, Thurston County, Lewis County, Mason County, Pacific County, and Grace Harbor County. Um, it's already been included in the 2019-2020 budget um, as anticipated revenue. And this supports Thurston County Strategic Plan Initiative 4, which is Strength and Emergency <coughs> Management Planning and Community Disaster Preparedness. Subject to your questions, request approval of the purchase for, or the request approval to, for this grant from the Department of Homeland Security. Anything? Anything? No, sir. All right. I would move to approve the federal fiscal year 2019 Homeland Security grant FFY19HSGP number E20-073 for the period of September 1st, 2019 through August 31st, 2021 for a total of $301,897 and authorize the Director of Emergency Services to sign the agreement 
as well as future amendments that do not change the approved dollar amount by more than 10 percent. Second. It's been moved and seconded to execute the contract for the Homeland Security Grant. Any further discussion? No, sir. No. Nope. Nope. All in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> and motion carries. Thank you, Kurt, very Thank much. You. Uh, agenda item number five, is we go to CPED, Community Planning and Economic Development. This is the Comprehensive Plan Amendment. Maya? Good afternoon, Commissioners. Maya Teeple, Associate Planner with Community Planning. I'm here today to request that the Board adopt a resolution and ordinance to amend the land use and associated zoning of the Evergreen State College and to implement new zoning standards for major educational institutions. This amendment would change the land use and the associated zoning for approximately 999 acres of the Evergreen State College located at 2700 Evergreen Parkway Northwest. It would change from its current land use and zoning of rural residential resource, one unit per five acres, to major educational institution. This amendment would also adopt new zoning standards within the zoning ordinance, Title 20 of the Thurston County Code, for major educational institutions by adopting a new chapter 2064 TCC and making associated changes within 2003, 2037, and 2054 of the Thurston County Code. The land use amendment and associated zoning was originally requested by the applicant in late 2013. The proposed land use and zoning change along with new zoning standards were reviewed and considered as part of the comprehensive plan periodic update in 2019. This item was included in the October 15, 2019 board public hearing for the comprehensive plan and public testimony was discussed in two follow-up board briefings on October 16th and October 31st of 2019. That concludes my remarks and subject to your questions, I recommend approval. Anything? Anything? No, thanks for this long motion, though, Maya. <laughs> Thank you, Maya. <laughs> Just good stuff. I would move I'm to approve. You. What's that? I'm timing you. Okay. <laughs> I would move to approve a resolution to amend Thurston County Comprehensive Plan Map L-1 Future Land Use to change approximately 999 acres of the Evergreen State College located at 2700 Park Evergreen Parkway Northwest from rural residential resource one unit per five acres to major educational institution and further move to approve an ordinance to amend the zoning, the official zoning map. Thurston County, Washington to change the zoning from rural residential resource, one unit per five acres, chapter 20.09A in Thurston County Code, to major education, educational institution, chapter 20.64 of Thurston County Code, uh, to implement the above land use plan amendment and to amend the Thurston County Zoning Ordinance, Title 20, of the Thurston County Code to adopt new standards for major edu educational institutions by adding a new chapter, 20.64 Thurston County Code, and by amending chapters 20.03, 20.37, and 20.54 Thurston County Code. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve this comprehensive plan <coughs> amendment. Uh, any further discussion? No, sir. Nope. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, 5B, Comprehensive Plan Amendment. I'm here today to request the board adopt a resolution and ordinance to amend the Thurston County Comprehensive Plan as part of the periodic update. The Thurston County Comprehensive Plan describes the long-term vision for Thurston County looking ahead to set direction for the county's growth over the next 20 years. The comprehensive plan defines the county's goals, policies, and objectives related to land use, natural resources, housing, transportation, capital facilities, utilities, economic development, environment and open space, and historic resources. These proposed amendments being considered for adoption with this resolution and ordinance are the core items of the comprehensive plan periodic update and they are part of the periodic update process under the Growth Management Act, RCW 3670A. 
The proposed amendments include chapters 1 through 10, chapter 12, chapter 13 glossary, appendices A through F, and related maps. And the ordinance and resolution would also make minor land use and zoning corrections for unincorporated Thurston County and would affirm that no changes are needed to manufactured housing policies and codes for consistency with state law. The core items of the Thurston County Comprehensive Plan periodic update have been under review since 2017. The Planning Commission held 17 work sessions on the core items from May of 2018 through August of 2019 to review and discuss the proposed amendments and held a public hearing on July 10th of 2019. The board held two briefings on this subject on September 4th and September 12th prior to holding a public hearing on October 15th of 2019 and held two follow-up work sessions on October 16th and October 31st to consider public testimony. That concludes my remarks and subject to your questions, I recommend approval. I know this is a long time coming, so uh, it's a short item, but it's an important item. And so thank you for getting this to this point. Any questions or comments? No, sir, I'm prepared to make a motion. You do wonderful work, Maya, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I move to approve a resolution to amend the Thurston County Comprehensive Plan as part of the periodic update, and further move to approve an ordinance to implement the changes in the resolution by amending the official zoning map of Thurston County, Washington. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the uh, Thurston County Comprehensive <coughs> Plan periodic update. Any further discussion? No, sir. Nope. All in favor say aye. 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 That motion carries. Thank you. County Manager? Uh, yes, Commissioners. Thank you for the floor. On the last two items that you just approved, it may appear, uh, it may appear to be a long motion or perhaps a short motion, um, but this is the result of a long, long process that, that involves uh, a lot of county staff dedication. Um, there is a lot of uh, public hearings, public input. The Planning Commission, as you uh, heard, has played a critical part in making sure that everything that is presented to you is in accordance to what they heard from the citizens. And um, I just want to make sure that um, the kudos goes to staff and the great work because this is a journey and it has been a long, long journey. So congratulations, kudos, kudos to all of you. Appreciate it. Thank you. thank you for that because it is intense and comprehensive. Good grief. So thank you very much. Thank you, County Manager. Uh, 5C. Execution of Regional Environmental Education Program Interlocal Agreement. Welcome. Good afternoon, Commissioners. I am Anne Marie Pierce, Education and Outreach Specialist with Community Planning. Uh, this item relates to the 2019 2024 Regional Environmental Education Program, or REAP, Interlocal Agreement. The Board had a briefing on this agreement on November 5th. This agreement implements a partnership with the cities of Olympia, Lacey, and Tumwater to continue Stream Team and other important regional environmental programs for the next six years. Thurston County's maximum annual contribution to this program will be $33,300 per year. This item supports Thurston County's strategic initiatives number seven, nine, and 13 related to preserving natural areas, supporting environmental health, and climate stabilization and increasing opportunities for civic engagement. Staff is requesting that the board move to execute the 2019-2024 REAP ILA, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Comments? Is this a continuation of a program? Yes, it is. In fact, Stream Team will be celebrating 30 years in 2020. Okay. Thank you, Anne-Marie. Go ahead. I would move to execute the 2019-2024 Regional Environmental Education Program, REAP, Interlocal Agreement, ILA. Second. It's been moved and seconded to uh, execute the 2019-24 REAP, Interlocal Agreement. Any further discussion? No, sir. No. Nope. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you again, Amory. Uh, agenda item number six, the auditor's office setting a public hearing to change precinct boundaries. And we have the uh, auditor, Mary Hall, here. Thank you, commissioners. Um, 
usually we come to you in the spring to do our annual precinct maintenance and uh, we do our maintenance due to a couple different things uh, when cities annex property we have rules that we can't cross city boundaries uh, in the case for these this precinct maintenance um, it's a result of just growth in the community we've got some precincts that are getting very large so we need to split them um, we showed you this morning what the plan was and what we need to do next is have a public hearing. Um, so I would respectfully ask that you set a public hearing for Tuesday, December 10th at three o'clock. And if people want to look at the, um, the precinct maps, they're out on our website so they can get there, thurstonvotes.org. And I would be happy to answer any questions. If I remember right, it was a Rochester, uh, a Lacey, and a Tumwater, and two Laceys are, are... Right, Lacey, Tumwater, and then two that are in the county, and yes, one is down by Rochester. There's a lot of new subdivisions going in, so it's strictly due to growth. So if you're curious, take a look at those maps. Okay. What was that, I'm sorry? Okay. Good. Uh, I have a question, and that is, uh, let me think about it because I just got a note, so I, my mind just went. Through. Oh, <laughs> the information, it's on the website. It's on the auditor's website, and then yes, get it to is. it through the county courthouse website and auditor's website? Yes. Okay. Yes. See, so that makes sense? They would just mm -hmm. go to the auditor section of the county website. Of the county website, okay. Yes. Uh, do you have any questions or comments? No, sir. I'm ready to make a motion. There we go. Thank you. I would move to set a public hearing for Tuesday, December 10th, 2019 at 3 p.m. or as soon thereafter as the matter may be heard at the Thurston County Courthouse, Building 1, Room 280, to consider public testimony regarding proposed precinct boundary changes. Second. It's been moved and seconded to set a public hearing to change precinct boundaries. Any further discussion? No, sir. No. Nope. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you, Mary. <coughs> Agenda item number six is the county manager, and we're just, uh, this is regarding the uh, proposed ordinance relating to the to regular property taxes. Uh, thank you, commissioners. Let me give you some uh, background and history. Um, the existing hilltop site of Thurston County government and the courts uh, include, include buildings one through six. Building one through three were constructed in 1978 and are the original complex of the courthouse. Over the last 40 years, the county purchased buildings four through six, which those buildings are located across the street. In 2015 and in 2018, the county conducted a courthouse renovations and replacement comparative feasibility studies for the purpose of to provide the county with a long-term solution uh, to housing court and other county administrative functions in an efficient and cost-effective <coughs> manner. The existing buildings uh, for uh, county government and the courts in their current site are at the end of their useful life costing significant taxpayers' dollars to maintain and operate. The current layout and design also makes it difficult for citizens to locate county resources and services in a timely manner. The existing layout of multiple buildings ma makes it difficult to provide a safe and secure courthouse uh, functions for jurors, victims, witnesses, county employees, and citizens as a whole. The 2018 study at the direction of the Board of County Commissioners conducted further analysis on three specific sites. The existing hilltop site of Thurston County government and the courts. Number two was the Plum Street site, which was formerly the original site of the Olympia City Hall and currently the location of the city of Olympia's Creighton Justice Center. And number three was the Harrison West, which is currently a undeveloped site on the west side of Olympia. Also, the Board of County Commissioners determined the best way to finance this con the construction of the new courthouse will be via a levy led left. 
RCW 84.55.050 parenthesis 1 provides for the levy of regular property taxes in an amount exceeding the limitations specified under Chapter 84.55 of the RCW. If such increase, increased levy is authorized by a ballot proposition approved by the voters in a general or a special election within the taxing district, that will be Thurston County. In April 30th, 2019, the Board of County Commissioner, Commissioners approved an ordinance authorizing to put this ballot measure uh, in front of the voters on uh, April 28, 2020. Following that action, you received public testimony and also provided feedback uh, from uh, citizens related to the setting in which the Board of County Commissioners took an action. That meeting was held in Rochester, Washington, as one of the, your attempts to reach out to the citizens. You had a follow-up conversations in an abundance of caution. You decided to open this ordinance again and also hold the public hearing. The ordinance, uh, uh, so you determined to have another public hearing on October 22nd, 2019. Also give you the opportunity to review the or, uh, revise the ordinance, adding additional language, particularly adding a uh, uh, um, language that uh, it speaks about uh, senior citizens and disabled and veterans exceptions. And that is related to RCW 84.36.3. Eight one, that you may be uh, exempting uh, from the levy left left under this particular RCW to those individuals they may qualify under uh, the uh, state law. Leading to the uh, October twenty second uh, public hearing, you receive a total of uh, sixteen written testimony, uh, eight in support, eight in opposition. Also, Mr. Pettis submitted to you a, uh, a list of uh, 334 uh, citizens where they were opposed to this measure. At the public hearing, you receive uh, public testimony, 11 in opposition, say six in support, and one comment was, none is, uh, was not clear as to in support or against it. You had a follow-up conversation uh, on the particular ordinance and you added additional language on section two, uh, paragraph A uh, and paragraph B. Um, and this uh, revised ordinance is uploaded to the public's review uh, leading to this um, um, action. So before you is, uh, is an ordinance to send this uh, uh, ballot measure. They will ask the voters to um, uh, vote on an estimated increase of 47 cents per 1,000 valuation uh, based on the 2020 levy 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 uh, valuation. And this ordinance also has a, a date in which you, you may consider putting from the voters of April 28, 2020. That's all I have for you, unless you have uh, uh, questions for me. Any questions or comments for the county manager? Not for the county manager, no. Anything? No, sir. Okay. Here's our motion. Yes, I will move to submit to the qualified electors of the county at a special election to be held on April 28, 2020 for a proposition authorizing the county to levy regular property taxes in excess of the limitations of Chapter 8455 RCW, exempting qualified seniors, disabled, and veterans pursuant to RCW 8436-381 and setting forth the text of the ballot proposition. I second it. So it's been moved and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Yes. Uh, I would, this has obviously been a big issue this year. Um, we have a major problem with the facility. Even our, even the folks that have expressed opposition acknowledge that um, based on the space and the lifespan of these buildings. Given, you know, I did inherit this, this uh, proposal, but I've looked carefully at it, and given the time, the thought, and the dollars that have been invested in this proposal, including 
as I understand, our own commissioners, um, former Commissioner Blake and Commissioner Edwards, going to the legislature to secure special uh, accommodation for the financing arrangement, which I thanked um, both of them for, for doing that. Um, this needs to go to the ballot. Uh, we, we, we're not going to... We're not going to be able to get, we have a problem, we have to solve it, and we are not going to get a consensus on an alternative approach until this proposal goes to the voters, given the time, resources, thought uh, that have been put into preparing it for the last <coughs> five and a half years. So I feel it's incumbent upon me to allow the voters to have their chance to weigh in, and we will respond accordingly based on their input. Commissioner. Yes, I would, uh, keep, in keeping this short, I guess my concern is that we have not, as a county, developed the public trust that I feel is needed to pass this type of issue, uh, recognizing that we do need to do something with the court business complex as it is, that's my main concern, where the everyday business of the court takes place. But I just don't feel this is the right answer. And uh, it is not in the best interest of the citizens of Thurston County or the taxpayers. And that's why I will be voting against it. As, uh, well, I'll start off with, in 2004, when this ballot measure came to, uh, to the community, I voted against it, and that was because I didn't understand the issues here inherent with the buildings. Uh, but now, I do. And as Glenn Morgan put it, we've inherited this. And if you do look a little, um, a bit of history, uh, you'll see that uh, there was no courthouse in Thurston County until 40 years after the county uh, was formed. And then it was moved here and moved there. And then 1892, the old state capital uh, on Capitol Way, or uh, the old state Capitol in 1892 before, it was there for 30 years before 1930, it moved to Capitol Way. Beautiful building, but the, the, uh, the county grew and uh, the services and government outgrew that building uh, after 30 years. And so then in 74, in fact, the, uh, the county looked at the uh, Capitol Center building, commonly known as the mistake by the lake, but never moved in. So in 74, 44 years after 1930, that building moved into this location. So it was 30 years and then this place, and now, now we're 44 years down the road. And again, we're growing, outgrowing, and the county's growing. I really understand now after 35 years in public safety, the safety of our citizens, the safety of our employees in the county, uh, the ability for us to deliver services as efficiently as we can to the community that's in our best interest to put this on the ballot. When we had the uh, public hearing several weeks ago, downstairs the, the room was packed and there were several people spoke against it and several people spoke in favor of it. And John Thunheim, the prosecuting attorney, said it be best succinctly as he was the last speaker. He said, you can see the, 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 uh, the house here is pretty divided on this issue. What better way to decide it than let the people choose and let the people vote. And that's my choice is to let the people vote. Uh, as my seatmate said, if, if they vote no, we got to go to plan B. If they vote yes, then we move on and, and fix what, uh, what they've set us out to do and trusted us to do. So that's why I'm voting yes for this thing, uh, for this ballot measure, or this, uh, this motion. So any further discussion? Uh, no, nope. maybe just one thing because I don't want to drag this out, but uh, there's going to be plenty of public discussion about this topic in the future. So a lot of these issues will be fleshed out, and right now is not the time to do so. So I'm, I'm ready. Sir. Okay. So it's been moved and seconded to put this on the ballot, and it's been discussed. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay, motion carries. Now we move on to uh, commissioners uh, reporting on our work assignments. Commissioner Mentor? Uh, okay. Uh, it's been a pretty busy couple of weeks for me. Uh, I didn't get a chance last week to report, so I'll kind of combine them into the last you know, week and a half here. 
Um, last week I was at the Community Action Council's uh, fundraiser for the Monarch Justice Center. On Thursday I attended uh, a research project related to the pocket gopher that the Washington uh, uh, Fish and Wildlife is, is working on. What they're trying to do is, um, it's always been said that the, the underground nature of the animals makes them very difficult to estimate populations. Uh, and they found that looking at mound, counting mounds is not an appropriate methodology because they found by a factor of two and sometimes even up to three, that can vary, the number of mounds can vary, population can vary um, based on the number of mounds. So they need a better way. And so they're doing something called a transect-based mound study. And they showed us how they're doing it. And um, they had trapped a gopher and let us take a look at it, which was something very unique. Mm. Uh, most people don't, have not seen one of these animals. Um, but the, the ev they showed us how to tell a mole, uh, a mole hill from a gopher mound. Uh, it was pretty you know, clear in terms of the type of soil and the shape and the direction from which the animal approaches is different. That was all really interesting, and so uh, I had a chance to just kind of dig in. The interesting pieces that I learned was that there are differences between the state. I'd never gotten into the nuances between the state listing and the federal listing and how they're different. The state lists, the, the federal government has listed the subspecies as individual animals. The, the, the state has listed the pocket gopher at a, at a more higher level. So the federal government could delist uh, a certain subspecies if there was recovery and it wouldn't necessarily trigger a state uh, because they're looking at it at one level up, mm -hmm. so to speak, on the species level. Second piece is that the federal government's scope of what it looks at is national. So if the, if the animal is recovered in a larger way across the nation, it can delist. Whereas Washington looks at a more parochial level, wanting to keep diversity of species. So it's just nuances of how you, I don't, not that it's going to play out that way, but it theoretically could play out that you'd have a delisting at the state level or federal level, vice versa, um, and not the other. So anyway, that was all, that was an interesting afternoon. Um, attended the, uh, a, a subcommittee group of the Thurston Climate Action Team that's uh, looking at um, our policies regarding tree uh, cutting in the county because that uh, relates to the carbon um, absorption and then the, some of the climate mitigation strategies. Um, they're going to do, some, I had a bunch of questions for them, they're going to do some more work. Uh, attended a homeless planning community group that a city of Olympia had at Capitol High School. Um, had some good conversations there with members of the Olympia City Council about um, what they're doing. Monday attended the opioid task force. On Wednesday, attempt, uh, attended the South Sound Food System Network, which is a piece of our Thurston Thrives Network that I wanted to reconnect with. I had attended a meeting as a candidate, but I wanted to check back in. They're going to have a, a, a South Sound Food Summit in March, on March 14th, I believe. Most of their effort right now is going into that, and it's going to be a great event, so people should take a look at that. I actually attended it a couple years ago when they did it for the last time. Wednesday, I attended the Rochester Chamber of Commerce. Um, Thursday, Habitat for Humanity fundraiser. On Friday, I attended a training at Public Health. Uh, it was called Trauma Informed, How Trauma Informed Approaches can, can Improve Criminal Justice Outcomes. And it was given by Clark County Sheriff's Department officials who uh, were able to really show how um, we can get um, better results from our law enforcement and corrections and stuff by knowing something about uh, trauma informed um, theory. Uh, also attended with Commissioner Edwards, a, a tenant, uh, event at the VFW post 318 for their 100th anniversary. Uh, and he read our proclamation and that was, that was a good event. And then on Monday, uh, two veterans events, um, both at the Capitol Rotunda and there's a Gold Star Family Monument kickoff fundraising campaign out at Lacey uh, Civic Plaza uh, that I attended. Also got a chance to ride the inner city transits um, uh, new bus rapid transit, which debuted yesterday, which takes a ride from Capitol Mall to Martin Way Park and Ride and turns a 70 minute ride into 30 minutes, or in my case, 26 minutes, because it was a holiday and there wasn't much traffic, but it, it was really, really quick and efficient. And this morning I was at Innovative Justice and we're digging into the new state legislation on mental health diversion. Two other small items. On uh, November 20th, no, inner City Transit is having a public hearing on the Zero Fare pilot project, a five-year pilot project to eliminate fares across the entire Inner City Transit system. 
Um, we are going to be proposing to, I'm on the board for that, so we're proposing to initiate that January 1st. And if you want to weigh in on that, November 20th at 530 at the Patterson Street home base for inner city transit. And finally, I uh, talked about the flood authority contest that we're doing where we're trying to get Thurston County residents to sign up. And the link was broken last week. So if you tried it and it didn't work, I got it fixed. ChehalisRiverFlood.com, you can sign up for alerts about flooding in our various river gauges around the Chehalis Basin. I'm in a, a little friendly contest with Grays Harbor and Lewis County commissioners trying to get more of our citizens signed up than the other counties. <laughs> and I want to make a good showing for Thurston County, so please check that, ChehalisRiverFlood.com. There's a link right there on the homepage. <laughs> nice. Commissioner? Well, I guess uh, my week consisted some of those things, but uh, I don't remember if Commissioner Mincer mentioned we were all up at the Capitol for a, a veterans presentation yesterday. Yesterday. And, uh, <clears throat> but my week consisted mostly of uh, work on, uh, for the citizens out there that don't know how close I'm following this, it's chemical application by commercial entities in the forest. And that's all through the Cascade mountain range. Uh, the commercial application of chemicals, and if you ever see this done with a helicopter and thousands of tons put on forest property and the potential adverse effects, uh, the industry doesn't uh, call it that very often, but uh, I, I think if you saw this happening, you would be as concerned as I am and that uh, comes down to the clean water uh, portion of that activity with my concern lies. And then uh, activity at the wind farm, the new wind farm up in, uh, out of uh, Vail between uh, Lewis County and Thurston County. So that was uh, the bulk of my, my week other than a uh, little bit of gopher, a little bit of courthouse in there. So that's it. Um, last week I attended, or attended, I had uh, lunch with uh, uh, John Millard. He's the uh, city treasurer and administrator for the city of Tenino. Uh, and we talked uh, about a host of issues in two hours, biosolids, commerce, agricultural business center, and uh, things of mutual interest to the county and, uh, uh, and to the city of Tenino and, and the region. Uh, Yes, we attended the uh, uh, the veteran Thurston County Veterans Council's Veteran Day ceremony at the state capitol in the rotunda, and every year it's 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 just so cool. Uh, it's a great way to spend just a couple hours. Uh, the MC for the event was uh, Madam Secretary Kim Wyman, and she did a wonderful down to earth job, <laughs> very down to earth, and uh, uh, told a, a personal story that was touching. Keynote speaker was the Honorable Denny Heck. And he always gives a he always gives a good presentation or a good talk, and um, then four at the end of the ceremony, four World War II veterans were honored and presented with flags and presentation. So it's very very worthwhile event. And then also last week, uh, Olympia's long term, long time uh, city manager Steve Hall retired after 23, 20, 20 what? Total thirty years. A total of 30 years as a county manager, uh, city manager, it's like 20 some years, it's been there quite some time. Uh, and he's leaving a void. And, uh, but that was a well attended event as well. Numerous people there filled the city council chambers. And that was the extent of my, my week last week. Now I turn to the uh, county manager. Uh, thank you, commissioners. Uh, just a reminder for the uh, viewing public next week's Board of County Commissioners is canceled. So there will be no uh, Board of County Commissioners. So let me walk you through your combined uh, agenda uh, for the next two weeks, where at, least, where at least two commissioners are present. You may have individual appointments on your individual calendars. Those will not be part of my report. Wednesday, November 13th at noon, you have uh, your monthly appointed uh, director's luncheon. You have the opportunity to connect with your appointed directors. Tomorrow, Wednesday the 13th, uh, November 13th, three in the afternoon, you have uh, a follow-up uh, meeting related to the flex unit where the 
you have uh, the opportunity to continue the conversations with uh, some of the stakeholders. No work session at two? No, we don't have anything specific. It's, that will be canceled. Thank you. Thursday, November 14th, you are invited to participate on the South Sound, South Sound Military Community Partnership Elected Officials Council. And that breakfast will be from 7 o'clock to 9.30 in the morning. And that will be located on uh, uh, I-5, ex exit 116 on the Eagles Pride Golf Course. Then you will come back here on November 14th, Thursday at 10 in the morning where you will have your commissioners check in and an agenda will be available uh, 24 hours in advance. Friday, November 15th, you have been invited to participate on the YMCA Youth and Government Program Breakfast located on the Hotel RL. Uh, Monday, November 18th through uh, Friday, November 22nd, uh, Commissioner uh, uh, Edwards, Commissioner Hutchins, myself, and other staff, county staff will be attending the Washington State Association of County 2019 County Leadership uh, Leaders uh, Conference. That will be located on the Davenport Hotel, located on 333 West Spokane Falls Boulevard in Spokane, Washington. And um, the next following week, that will be the week of uh, Thanksgiving holiday. Nothing on Monday, November 25th. And on Tuesday, November 26th, you will come back here. We'll be uh, you reviewing the agenda for that day as well as the agenda for the following week. And that's all I have for you. So I just want to reiterate that uh, on the 19th, next week, the 19th, there is no BOCC meeting. In case anybody's <laughs> going to try to tune in for it, it's not going to be there. All right. Thank you, County Manager. Anything for you good to the order? No, sir. No. No, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. <clears throat>